Welcome to one more episode of Data Minds uh, podcast uh, from Data Science Conference. Uh, we have uh, with me Terry. Uh, he is one of the keynote speakers uh, here on conference. How do you like it so far? Oh, I mean, you know, I've been seeing this conference evolve from uh, the last five years. Mm -hmm. uh, today in this uh, brand new Sava Center, I don't know if you're going to show the rest of the world how wonderful and huge yep. it is. Uh, and overall, the professional, the, the extreme sort of uh, dedication towards the audience, to uh, the, the people. I've only seen this conference uh, become one of the best conferences uh, in Europe. Yep. I know it's the best in the East, or East Europe. But I, I can tell you, it is definitely the top three conferences in the whole of Europe. Yeah. So I have seen it grow, and it's just wonderful to be back. Yeah, I think I'm here from se for seven years, I think I'm here. And uh, I re still remember second conference when we were in Holiday Inn, and there were like 50 of us, one track, uh, and now everybody wants to hear what is new with uh, data and AI. Even I saw a couple of uh, legal people, then healthcare professionals, not connected to tech technology, but uh, yeah. at least wanting to understand what is new and what uh, what, what is being developed. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't uh, spend too much uh, words about you, so maybe I want to give you a chance to present yourself. However sure. You yes. Like. So I am Terry. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I've spent about 30 years um, starting as, you know, academic, although, uh, you know, spent the, actually the first 10 of my, my uh, years of my career in uh, oil and gas sector, not a field I had, I, I was not a trained geologist, I was, I'm an astronomer. Um, the last 20 years I've spent uh, in academia and then moving into working with large companies like KPMG, consulting. Um, I did a startup uh, about 12 years, 13 years ago um, in strategy consulting. So I learned a lot of things along the way. Yep. Um, in the last, uh, I guess, uh, eight, nine years, <clears throat> I've been spending a lot of time understanding uh, how to build uh, you know, startups that actually can serve enterprise customers. Uh -huh. um, and that is where I am today. Um, so all my years of experience in consulting where you have to speak, uh, not jargon, not technology, don't talk about complex uh, AI models, because they are very anxious, even today, right? And to reduce their yeah. anxiety, you have to explain to them in business terms what it means to them. So I need that in my company. We all need it. Yeah. I need it as well. because yeah. uh, I wanted to ask you, since you mentioned the consulting career, is this the only path uh, if you want to be uh, on the level of uh, business people and speak about technology but to raise it to the business level? And, or there is another way? Or what are important things to teach young engineers in order to raise their... Uh, game to, to, to really go in front of customers in different domains, speak about problems and really find solutions for the problems yeah. using technology, not speak yeah. about technology. Yeah. Uh, let me give you, I mean, real world examples, uh, you know, are always the best sort of, you know, it's almost like sunlight is the best disinfectant, as they say, right? So when I used to work in high-end consulting, uh, you would be surprised that we used to hire people with econometry, econometry background, so master students, yeah. uh, econometry. It's, it's about understanding both sides of the coin, and these people fit the best. Mm -hmm. You will see in Dutch uh, politics, uh, and we just had elections yesterday, the far right won, which is actually wonderful news because they've been ignored for the last 20 years. Uh, but the second party, which is led by uh, a politician is an econometrist. Uh -huh. And he is a walking and talking encyclopedia who can explain <laughs> to you in very simple terms as well. Yeah. That is a bombshell combination we should be hiring for talent. Yeah. I've hired people with great, so PhD backgrounds, PhD backgrounds, postdoctoral, sometimes double PhD. Um, if I bring them in front of the customer, yeah. they're looking at their shoes, they're not looking, in, they don't have eye contact. Yeah. They're yeah. not building a relationship. Yeah. 
uh, and the ones who have done that have succeeded. So um, I think it is really key that all organizations focus on at least three skills to develop. Technical is a given. You, you will know this. You will run yeah, all yeah. your AI models. Presentation skills yeah. is extremely important. And understanding that, finally, making the presentation, make a business presentation, convert it into technical, yeah. is, you know, the logic of thought, right? Yeah, yeah. McKinsey, Boston Consult, the first, when people enter those companies, they are taught that your mind is full of a lot of ideas. Uh, you have to first briefly touch them and ex start explaining people why are you talking about it? Always summarize it, almost like a chat GPT. You're asking yeah. it to summarize. The only thing is your brain is 10 times superior to all these uh, AI models. So I think skill to technical skill, presentation skill, and being able to very quickly put yourself in the shoes of the other person yeah. is, this is the great. way to connect. This is great, yeah. If you are able to evaluate what you will be saying to a customer from his shoes, this is like a superpower, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah There's definitely. no AI that's going to do this. You as a human will. Yeah. I, I, I hear a lot in my company uh, that uh, some sales guy need to sell something and then engineers will do things. But um, my co-founder is Mikhailo. He is from US, working in Airbnb. He's principal data scientist. Basically, he's leadi yeah, yeah. leading, uh, now he's principal machine learning engineer because he forbid uh, to call data, data science is a term that is slowly fading. Yeah. Uh, so mach principal machine learning en engineer. He has biweekly meetings with a board or a finance department where he is essentially selling impro technical improvements to Airbnb platform using PowerPoint. And then he's going back to uh, code and trying to develop it, but he needs bi-weekly to report and sell and sell and sell. Basically, he's selling himself and his yes, ideas. Yes. So definitely, this is the skill after you reach some kind of uh, intermediate or senior level Absolutely. that you definitely need to do, develop in yeah. order to be the successful in this the, industry. Yeah, the sooner you develop the skill, the better it is. Yeah, um, somebody has... Don't get, has I've seen, I yeah. know people who are in their late 30s, early 40s, and they constantly are at a, you know, uh, not a position where they can command, uh, lead larger teams. Yeah. Uh, I have seen 22, 23 year olds who are very quickly organizing teams, yeah. know how to run teams. So I wish, uh, you know, if you have at least 20% of your organization, it will have direct impact to yourself, believe me. Yeah, definitely. The least amount of people you have who understand this, uh, the more, uh, burden it is for sales. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, my my other co-founder is from Netherlands. He is living uh, near Amsterdam, Nashko. Um, he told me that uh, in his company they were thinking about um, uh, doing one week uh, restaurant uh, training, yeah, yeah. being a food uh, server. Because you need to smile, you need to understand yes, the people yes, yes, across the yes. across the table in order to get a tip. Uh, so I think uh, this is really great idea. We as my 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 background is engineering, so I still call uh, call myself a software engineer. Uh, we are autistic. We we like computer. We like to hide behind computers. But I think we need to see the world. We need to oh, understand yes, people, and yes. we need to build connections. Absolutely, that's that's the key. That's yeah, the key. yeah. And um, yeah, now you are, uh, if I understood correctly from your LinkedIn, uh, ex both executive and you are investing. What is your company? Is it DK Labs or? Yes. Uh, so what are just, you? Yeah. yeah. A bit about uh, yeah. the, 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 your company right now. Absolutely. So uh, we started out on a mission uh, when I was uh, kind of a bit, you know, 2014, 2015. We, uh, we are seeing uh, the whole deep learning wave was very uh, experimental. Yep. A lot of research papers were written, some interesting things were happening. So I quit my job at a also very high-end consulting uh, company uh, that used to compete with McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group. We had our own data scientists as well. I said, this data scientist, as you rightly mentioned, I said, it's, we're actually just crunching 
data using uh, machine learning, simple machine learning models. Yeah. It almost felt to me, I have a database background, I'm also uh, being a programmer, Java programmer. So I've spent a lot of years, uh, you know, Oracle database. It almost felt like machine learning was a, a better improved version of uh, databases. So to me, I was feeling it's not really the breakthrough that the industry is uh, probably, you know, it, it's, it's going to be very, you know, many, all organizations use that. So it was a good move. So I stepped up and I took a year of sabbatical and then I set up our DK, it's formerly Deep Kaffa Research. I set that up and, and suddenly we had a lot of research. So I traveled around the world, I gave a lot of lectures. Uh, theoretical lectures, mm -hmm. also all kinds of uh, uh, conferences around the world. Um, so we set the company up in 2017, it's six, uh, six years now. Uh, now we have transformed it into a holding company because we build a lot of intellectual property. Uh -huh. And as you know, when you are doing that, then you need to secure your assets into a holding. Um, so that's the or one organization, that is the research lab. The second organization, which is it like, sorry, is it like an incubator? Uh, yes, yes, it is. You're pretty much working with. It's a uh, lab, so a lot of ideas come here. I'm, I'm going to show two startup projects, which hopefully will also become uh -huh. independent babies in the next uh, couple of months. I have a major announcement to make uh, in about an hour uh, ah, when I great. do the keynote. Although it's already out on LinkedIn, the, our publicist have already published the announcement. But, uh, so we, the research lab is indeed an incubator. I want to keep that for a really long time because yeah. AI has a lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I also need to sell, I need to build services for my customers and I realized that most of our customers uh, were all, you know, they were saying, oh, research guys, so yeah, these guys do lots of research. So I said, okay, hang on. I need to leverage, you know, my 15, 20 years of experience as, yeah. as high-end consultant uh, working with all the executives around the world. And uh, so we established Real AI, uh, that is the enterprise AI company. And there we convert the incubated ideas in uh, the research lab. Yeah. And we polish them, we make them, uh, we, we either create services, uh, implementation platforms, or even develop applications. That's so, great. Uh, you connect the two where, where yeah, it's uh, yes. world of, you know, I wanted world to do of procurement and a lot of complicated exactly. administration so you get it. and world of startups uh, where everything is uh, Because I really believe, fast. honestly, I believe, so there is a research lab uh, and a research lab attracts, uh, is a magnet for nerds. Yep. Okay. So chief data scientists and all that. But sometimes we realize that these guys don't have a direct line to CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, CDOs, yeah. CAIO, Chief AI Officer, uh, uh, and as well as the, the, you know, the or, or other organization like marketing, uh, all those things. So in order to connect those two worlds, uh, we established Real AI, uh, it's now four years now, uh, to actually uh, sell our strategy services, implementation services, um, and also uh, you know manage services. Yeah, right? all the things that I learned when I we work with big companies like KPMG, Atos. Uh, you know, yeah, so yeah. I have services. You need to understand that that's what Microsoft is doing. So we are very happy that Microsoft is actually try is trying to convert OpenAI into an enterprise company because this is what the world needs. Yeah, I the think the world uh, does not need. Yeah a lot of researches and very little products. Yeah. So that's what, and, and I inherently and deeply believe that. And because of that incubator, as finally answering your question, original question, uh, we launched uh, our energy AI startup, which I invest 100%. We own 100% of the company together with my co-founders. It's called EarthScan. Uh, and uh, as an investor, so I have three hats. <laughs> so when I'm in the research lab, I'm putting the white coat and I'm walking yeah, around yeah, and being, you're a being researcher. a nerd. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I'm enterprise, you will see me dress up in a suit yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and I'm meeting, you know, when I'm in the Middle East, sometimes you're meeting the Sultan, uh, you're meeting the ministers. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you know, you have to respect the decorum and understand that yeah. from their perspective. And in the startup, my hat is that I turn into a very, let's say, very razor sharp uh, investor. Yeah. So I tell my team, do you have the team? Yeah, no, okay. Do you have the product? 
Have you tested the product? Have you have validation? Can you sell the product? And you assemble the team, then I will put 100,000 bucks. And that's yep. how I invest. So EarthScan is a wonderful story. We've uh, achieved uh, uh, over a million uh, euro uh, uh, revenue. Very nice. It's a little company. There's a lot of interest from really big oil and gas companies into our startup. So that's the strategy, and I hope I can release some of more of these exciting startups through this uh, construct. But it is really, uh, we need, I think, more of this uh, bridge between uh, lab and uh, really applied AI where you can solve problems. Yeah, I would uh, say it's kind of, it's, so, it's sort of like, a, a, obviously Y Combinator is a huge yeah. success. So I always thought that we don't have much of those really culture uh, things in Europe. Mm -hmm. We have to build, we, we need to have an, inc see there are lots of incubators. I meet a lot of guys yeah. here yeah. in Serbia, in Croatia. Yeah, those yeah. incubators, you should be like a production, it should be a production line. Yeah. Assembly line is where researchers assemble the product. Production line is where the startups are going and launching. It's almost like you know launching rockets to the moon. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to do my part in a, in a small way. I really hope that we can have this incubator system where young European uh, and and young and old, of course, are very smart people in all age uh, groups. Uh, they don't have to say I want to apply to YC. They should think. There is a, a one billion, or you know, European Commission has so much money. They should be able to say there is a ten billion mandate, yeah. and these bunch of entrepreneurs uh, are actually making sure that we are creating this economy for, yeah. for Europe. So I have this grand vision. I, yeah. I keep trying, and and I hope someday we can succeed. There is uh, one funny thing that I heard. Uh, U.S. has a lo uh, uh, lot of startups in AI world and they are number one in uh, startups in AI world. But we as Europe choose to uh, fight in different area. We are number one who regulated AI. Yeah. So I guess this can be a source of problem. But you, we are scratching a surface around the big yes. news, YC, Microsoft. So I wanted to maybe uh, ask you about latest developments in AI. Uh, but not to comment uh, Sam Altman, OpenAI, Microsoft. If you want, you can share your thoughts. But this uh, at least made me think about the pace of uh, AI. Uh, because I think one front is thinking that uh, OpenAI is moving really fast because of competition. The other front is thinking that this is right kind of uh, speed because you, you know, innovation cannot be stopped. So maybe to comment about uh, speed yeah. of innovation and are we doing it carefully? Uh, or are we doing it uh, as we can do it in uh, certain circumstances? It is complicated because, again, this is again what kind of hat you have on. Yeah. So OpenAI started off with putting a hat and a lab lab jacket. That's if you're in lab, then we are moving too fast. Probably. Yes. <laughs> so the lab guys are thinkers. They may overthink sometimes. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, and there are many innovations that have been blocked because we were too scared and you know we didn't need to be. But I'm sure they've also stopped some very dangerous technology to escape. Yeah. So I understand the merit of why uh, we have to think carefully when we are in the lab setting. Yeah, yeah. Now, OpenAI, when it created a capped LLC company, uh, it was just like real AI, it wanted to be, you know, build products, ship products, go fast. And that's the game, Sam, uh, you know, uh, Greg and all those people do very well, yeah. right? So when they, went, they go to the playground and then you say, okay, let's play football, all right? So there are some researchers, uh, you want them to be in the defense. Yeah. Because clearly Sam is going to be a striker, Greg Barr Brockman is going to be the midfielder, yeah. and you want to play. And they're, they want to score and they were scoring, but it's it's going to be a bit uh, dangerous if your defense is turning its back and scoring their own goal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in a way, that's what happened um, in, uh, in the last couple of days. And I can imagine if you're the striker or captain of your football team or a soccer team, uh, the last thing you want is one of the board members uh, writing a research paper talking about, uh, and it's even bad, because if you write a research paper, you should write a, a very objective research paper. Yeah. So if a board member is writing a research paper, this happened two weeks ago, three weeks ago, even before the drama, 
and saying that this is bad what we are doing and uh, in fact praising a competitor yeah about that they're doing a better job yeah, yeah, yeah then you can imagine this is like your goalkeeper is scoring your own goals yeah yeah yeah, yeah. because That's, the board is the ultimate yeah. line of defense so okay that aside i mean i have i understand both sides of the coin uh, but since I, I, I live in this world myself, I created this world for ourselves also in the similar construct. The best we do in our company is we have a board. In fact, my co-founder is extremely anti-speed, anti, -speed, anti uh -huh. very, very. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is we have a very deep trust from both sides. Yep. So my co-founder, she knows uh, when I'm in the board, she knows, okay, this guy hold on, you're going too fast. And I understand that, and I can still achieve my goals. But she's not kicking the ball back into our own uh, uh, goalpost and ruining the game for us. And I'm being careful in going too fast yep. with advancement of AI. So I think this is a great lesson for OpenAI as a company. Yeah. It's a maturity journey. Yeah. Uh, and and, and this, was, uh, this was a bit rather immature. It was uh, very poorly ex executed. It's, it was either poorly executed or a lot of things are happening behind the scenes, which we, we don't, don't know. know. But I think yeah, uh, it's poorly I, executed. Yeah, I cannot speculate. And yeah. like I said, uh, and I'm sure there are other things. Uh, we will you know. watch some great movie in a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you always know. I mean, I, I remember one incident. One incident was a big thing when Microsoft under Steve Ballmer uh, wanted to buy Yahoo for uh -huh. $47 billion. Yeah. Uh, dollars. Yeah, yeah. And the strange thing was IBM was blocking and they had no right to block. I mean, if, if yeah. so there's someone, this, it should be the SEC. Yeah. That's the, this, uh, yeah. the Security and Exchange Commission should say, oh, well, we don't think this is good for the competition. But did you know that uh, Google founders uh, called up Jerry Yang and uh, discouraged yeah. him from selling his company to Microsoft? Yeah. Now you tell me, what happened to Yahoo? Where is Yahoo today? <laughs> Nowhere. Yeah. It got ruined. Yeah. So I fully understand when OpenAI is uh, the guys who want to link, they don't want this company to die. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, no. Uh, so yeah. I, you know, it's uh, we need, and, and why, the reason why I'm giving this example is we don't know what is happening in the background. Yeah. And uh, I hope that you know this innovation is great. Uh, there will be a lot of mistakes made. Yeah. That's fine. Even 25 years ago with the internet, we made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Um, and I think we will we will be fine. So I yeah, don't worry too much about it. Let's hope this is the maturity. Uh, path. It's a maturity. And, uh, you used a yes. really great uh, analogy. I want to repeat it again uh, with the football and goalkeeper scoring your goal. So yeah, uh, thanks, Terry, uh, for it was really I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. And Thank uh, you very much. I will come to your uh, big announcement. Uh, you 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 shared a really huge. good teaser. It is huge. Yeah. At least. Uh, yeah, it's it's in a nine-figure kind of story. Great, but Great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Thanks, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful. I mean, this is wonderful data mines, and you guys are doing a wonderful job. I will let you know when uh, this uh, episode yes. is live, and so will, you can. We will yeah. help you uh, disseminate it. Yeah. wonderful. Thanks very much. Thank you.